Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Rift and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we're starting off the episode in front of the two ice tunnels we created last time. And as you will no doubt have seen in the last episode, these things are incredibly fast. We're gliding on packed ice using a boat, traveling hundreds of blocks in mere seconds. And now I have got the portal set up at the far end of this that takes us out to the Badlands biome. Also the jungle biome and a mega tiger that are conveniently located around the same place. But this thing could even be faster if we used blue ice instead of packed ice. So that is part of what I want to get done in today's episode. The problem with that, of course, is that blue ice is a little bit rare. It can only be found in iceberg biomes and not in such great quantities that I feel like tearing all of the, those icebergs down and harvesting them for tunnels like this. This is a 500 block long tunnel. There are approximately four stacks of packed ice blocks in this, and four stacks of blue ice might be a little bit harder to come by than all of this. Luckily for us, there are ways you can farm ice and then actually craft it into blue ice from regular ordinary ice. So it goes through the packed ice stage and then crafting packed ice into blue ice is possible as well. And that's what we're gonna cover in today's episode. Before we do that, let's actually take a look at the three different kinds of ice as they can be found in the wild. Starting off with our goal. This right here is blue ice. It is the slippiest form of ice, has the least amount of friction on anything that is gliding across it, whether that be a boat or an item or anything like that, even a player or a mob has less friction on blue ice, meaning that that is the optimal block to use for traveling high speeds using the nether hyperloop design that we've created already. The problem with blue ice, as I mentioned before, it only generates in these iceberg biomes, meaning that there are occasional dotted little clumps of blue ice here and there, but these icebergs are actually quite beautiful. It's quite nice encountering them in the ocean, and I don't really feel like tearing one of these down just to get a handful of blue ice. There is probably about a stack, maybe a little bit more, because the icebergs actually do go below the surface. So yeah, there is, there's a decent quantity of blue ice in this particular iceberg. We could tear it down if we wanted to, but the fact that you can renew ice is kind of the reason I want to leave these icebergs as they are. Make them a kind of landmark, make them a pleasure to float around, maybe even make some kind of base out here in the long term. If we wanted to make a Superman-style fortress of solitude or something like that, this is probably where we would come. So while we might take a block of it here and there when we need to, the majority of the blue ice I want to get in this world is going to be farmed. For that, we will need packed ice. And packed ice is what we've already been using in the nether tunnels. It is kind of the, the middle tier of ice. As far as slippiness goes, it has a little bit more friction than blue ice, but a little bit less friction than regular ice. It's still perfectly feasible to use it in ice roads in the nether, and you can use it for item transport and all kinds of other useful things, not least because packed ice is everywhere. I've torn down a significant chunk of an iceberg over there, and it really hasn't diminished the size all that much, especially considering there are tons of icebergs all around us as we speak. And nine packed ice can be crafted into a single blue ice. One other thing to note about packed ice is that these iceberg biomes aren't the only source of it. In fact, icebergs, these frozen oceans, were only really added in the update aquatic in Minecraft 1.13. So before that, there was a source of packed ice in a completely different biome, which we haven't explored yet in this series. And I think I know where one is, so I'm gonna go out and find it. Welcome to the Ice Plains Spikes Biome, one of the rarest and possibly most beautiful Minecraft biomes out there. These things are pretty rare. You will quite regularly find them attached to snow plains, but snow plains themselves are pretty rare. If you found one of these, then congratulations, because they are really quite a sight to behold. You have all of these little spires of ice and then these towering ones up here that kind of look like the Empire State Building or some kind of giant torch or something like that. It's really quite special. And as a result, a lot of people used to try and preserve the beauty of these things as long as they could, taking down some of these smaller ice spikes or maybe even the little frozen lakes that are around here. But this was the source of packed ice until frozen oceans came to be and allowed you to harvest ice directly from icebergs out there in the ocean. So I'm gonna leave this biome alone for now, but it's at least good to know where one of them is. We're about 2,000 blocks west and 3,400 blocks north, roughly, and this thing stretches for quite a distance. It's not one of the largest biomes I've seen, but it is definitely quite big. So for whatever reason, if we wanna come back and build here, we could build the Fortress of Solitude here as well. I'm, I don't know why I'm stuck on this Fortress of Solitude idea, but I don't know, just being around all of this ice kind of makes sense to me. Over here in the river, we have our third and final form of ice, and this is actually the one that we're going to be kind of 
home growing, if you like. This is just ice, regular ice, and it can be found in a variety of different places, specifically where there are cold biomes like these snowy tigers, ice spikes, or frozen rivers. You won't find it all that commonly in iceberg biomes, actually. I think a lot of the icebergs are just made out of packed ice. Occasionally, you'll find bits and pieces of this here and there, but for the most part, you'll find it generating in cold biomes in the rivers. Now, with each of these types of ice, it is important to make sure you have a silk touch pickaxe when you want to acquire it. Actually, a silk touch tool of any kind. It doesn't have to be a pickaxe. A pickaxe is just the fastest. And it can be broken quite quickly if you've got a silk touch pickaxe and you are standing on land. Obviously, if you're in the water, it's going to take a little bit longer. Conduit power might help with that if you need to harvest a whole bunch of it from the water. But for the most part, just find a place to stand on land and then just harvest as much ice as you care to. Now, you'll notice that in the river here, we've taken out a few of the water sources, but the water sources will reform in a river. And that is kind of the basis of ice farms because only water sources can be converted into ice in cold enough conditions and the ice can actually reform in this river so we could technically speaking stand here wait for the ice to grow back and then harvest a whole bunch of it at once cut it back wait for the water sources to reform and start again note that if you break ice without using a silk touch tool it doesn't drop an ice block but it does create a water source there and some people pointed out in the episode where i created the ink farm that bringing ice with me to create the water sources in the ink farm might have been a slightly more elegant solution than placing all of the water sources from buckets and going down and refilling them every single time so having ice around can actually be incredibly useful for technical purposes if you've got some regular ice on you you can create a water source pretty much anywhere except for the nether without having to worry about carrying buckets in individual spaces in your inventory because much like other blocks ice stacks to 64 so carrying some ice around with you actually is quite a good idea not least because also we can convert it from regular ice in a crafting table into packed ice and then once we've got a decent amount of packed ice we can convert that into blue ice which we're going to swap out in our ice roads in the nether but luckily for us players there is actually a way that you can farm ice without having to come out 3,000 blocks to the nearest frozen biome. And you may remember that a while back when we were working on a certain project, we encountered problems with ice forming where we didn't really expect it to. And that place is the iron farm. Notice how there are torches all around the perimeter of this. And remember back in episode 52, when we were placing the water, it started freezing over if it wasn't exposed to light. And that is because we're in a mountain biome. Above a certain elevation in mountain biomes, you start to get snow forming like this on open blocks when it rains. And also water exposed to the open sky will start to freeze. That's above a certain elevation. I'm pretty sure it's about Y92. So you'll notice how the tops of these mountains around here are covered in snow. These are the perfect conditions for farming ice. And all you need to do is set up effectively like a set of infinite water sources. If you want like a two by two of water up there, that's going to freeze over and will form infinite ice for you if you build it up in a large enough area. So we're going to swoop down to this mountaintop over here, and I'm choosing this one because it's fairly close to the spawn point. It's around the area that I usually work, and this is kind of a place that will be loaded in quite frequently, so it'll give time for the ice to freeze over regularly. We're going to carve out a large enough area of this that we can create a decent sized ice farm. I'm thinking probably 16 by 16 if we can, which means we'll probably going to have to dig down into the mountain a little bit so as not to disturb the exterior of it too much but then I think we can start creating our first ice farm. Okay, 16 by 16 felt a little bit large for this mountain top. I thought we had a little bit more room to work with here, but instead I went with 12 by 12. It looks discreet enough. If we look at it from ground level, you can't really see all that much of it. Just a little wall of stone brick up there, and obviously the iron farm behind it is kind of stealing focus a little bit anyway. If we wanted to blend this in with the environment, we could even make it into like an old mountain top ruin or something like that. But anyway, now it's time to discuss... Oh gosh, there's a pig in here. Of course there's a pig in here. It's time to discuss exactly how we're going to be farming the ice and look a little bit more into the physics of how ice forms up here and how we can use that to our advantage. So to start off with, I'm going to place a diagonal line of ice blocks directly across the center of this square. And thankfully, because I built it as a square, <laughs> it works out to the perfect diagonal line. I was a little bit worried, guys, a bit worried. So we're going to break this without using our silk touch tool, and it's going to form water sources. Now, you'll remember that if water sources connect side by side like that, they form new water sources. And building a diagonal line directly across, across a square like this 
uh, with water sources that are coming from the ice, it will actually fill up this entire area with water sources. There you go, reaches all the way to the corners, and you'll notice that ice is already starting to form. Now, for ice to form, the water has to have access to the open sky, and these water sources have actually blocked the water in the corner from turning into regular water. There we go. Right, so, so yeah, the water blocks will actually have to have access to the open sky in order to freeze into ice, which means we're going to have to take down this tree, because blocks like leaves like this above here will actually prevent sky access to it. So maybe we should just trim it back a little bit, I'm not sure, but like I said, this is going to completely fill over with ice eventually. Now, obviously for us to harvest the ice, we want to use our Silk Touch pickaxe, which is going to be fine for breaking out individual blocks like this, and if you just want to harvest a little bit of ice, you can always do that now. But the problem is when this entire thing is frozen over with ice, when it's going to be optimal to harvest it all, the problem is the water sources aren't going to immediately reform. So we have a couple of options now. We could place strategically placed light sources around this, which would prevent the ice from forming in the first place and melt it if it did form. This is a little bit more difficult to control because of the precise light level ice blocks need to form and break back into water sources. You need a light level of 12 or above to prevent water from permanently becoming ice. I think at light level 12, it kind of reverts back and forth from ice to water again. Like the light will actually kind of heat it up once it's formed into ice and cause it to break. But then that's not going to necessarily be the best option for this because it involves taking out a decent chunk of the area that would become ice and then the water sources would have to flow together. The diagonal line down the middle is kind of the most efficient way of having the water sources reform. Another alternative would just be to harvest all of the ice in here and then go back through and place the water sources in manually, either by breaking ice blocks like we just did or placing a whole bunch of buckets in here. But again, that seems like a little bit more trouble than it's worth. It seems like a a little bit of a task each time we want to reset the farm. So instead what we're going to do is place a diagonal line of stone blocks up here. I'm actually going to use stone brick for this. Any kind of solid block will do, even a slab or perhaps even like leaf blocks as long as it blocks light. I think it may even be possible to do this with glass because I think this isn't necessarily dependent on like the transparency of the block. The ice actually needs direct sky access to form from a water source. And so by placing a diagonal row of blocks across this, you basically have a guarantee that the water underneath those blocks is never going to form into ice. And what that means is the water sources underneath those diagonal blocks will be preserved. Notice that I haven't placed them in the water, I've placed them one block above the water and the shadow that's being cast here indicates that the ice will not form underneath those blocks. So every time I clear out the ice from either side of this farm, all of the water underneath here is going to flood back out and is going to reform water sources like it just did when we placed the ice blocks in the first place. To demonstrate, I'm going to hang out here until all of this ice has formed on either side and then we can clear all of that out, harvest the ice and watch the water sources refill. Well, one thing's for sure, I definitely need to pig-proof this place better. <laughs> They've been nudging me around while I was waiting for all of the ice to form, and this little C shape over here has finally started to fill in. I don't know why that was taking so long. I don't think there's much in the way of, like, anything blocking this, and yeah, I, th I think it's probably just a quirk of Minecraft randomly deciding which of these blocks to fill in with ice. And you'll notice that it doesn't do it in any kind of like pattern. It doesn't start to freeze from the edges and the, the other ice blocks next to these are not kind of encouraging the water sources to freeze over. It's not like the ice kind of spreads so much as it just randomly chooses blocks to replace with ice. I think over here, some of the ice blocks underneath here formed before I put the stone bricks in there or had decided to form and it was just kind of taking a while to catch up or something. So underneath here, I am actually going to have to break that block there and then place another water source in here so that we can definitely have this working. But then all I need to do is go around with my Silk Touch pickaxe and break everything else in here except for the stone bricks that are covering the center. And you'll notice that once we break away all of the blocks around the outside, this entire thing has reformed into water sources, which means now all we need to do is wait for it to freeze again and we get more ice to harvest. And the same is totally true of the other side. We can break out all of the ice from here like so, get rid of all of these, 
pick it all up with the silk touch we have almost three no two and a half stacks of ice yeah roughly about that probably we would have got two and a half stacks if i hadn't broken some of the ones over there manually but this is perfect this is a nice little ice farm and we'll be able to get all of the ice we want from this realistically speaking if you want a massive yield of ice it's probably best to go out to a snow plains biome somewhere where there's a nice wide area or somewhere where there's a mountain that you don't have to worry too much about clearing out and make either a massive ice field or a bunch of these smaller farms like this and that will work out pretty well for you you'll still have to harvest the ice manually you could even implement some sort of system where pistons push it around a little bit if you want to but in this case the only modification i'm going to make up here is just to raise the height of these stone brick blocks a little bit because regardless of where the block is it doesn't have to be directly above the water source it can be you know up to build height i imagine you can probably still place these blocks and it will still cover up those specific water blocks down the middle and no others it's not like it casts a shadow to either side but by raising this up it just means we can walk around more freely under here when we are harvesting the ice so all of the water sources in the middle will still be present but we can just go through and take out the entire 12 by 12 square of ice at once instead of having to mess around hopping over this barrier in the center and now we have ourselves an ice farm and i can start converting some of this ice into packed ice well that's going to get me 17 blocks of packed ice and that's 18 total because i had one left over from the iceberg and that's going to get me precisely two blocks of blue ice now considering i said we needed four stacks of packed ice to fill out one of those single uh, nether tunnels, the one that leads out to the mesa is about 500 blocks long and every alternating block is an ice block, so that means we're probably going to need about 250 ice blocks. In terms of blue ice, that's going to take quite a while, and I think this ice farm will probably be used for other things, we'll use the ice for other stuff, and I might return to the iceberg biome, take down a bit more packed ice, and then craft that into blue ice. In fact, I already have a significant amount of that in my storage warehouse already that we can use. But it's good to know that ice is a renewable resource that can be farmed in large quantities like this. You'll probably need ice at some point for technical projects like uh, moving items around in water streams. We've done that already with the squid farm. And yeah, ice is kind of useful. It's also a really nice aesthetic building block to have something with a bit of transparency, but something which is not necessarily a glass block. You have to worry a little bit about light placement when you're placing ice as an aesthetic block, but if you want to use it as windows, it makes for a really interesting texture. It is connected by default, so it doesn't have those glass borders that you're used to with glass, and it can look quite good as a modern window. Obviously, the blue ice and the packed ice are opaque. You cannot see through those, and they count as solid blocks as well. So remember that mob spawning rules still apply. However, mob spawning rules as regards the regular ice it counts as a transparent block so i don't think mobs can actually spawn on it so by converting all of the packed ice i've got in my storage system into blue ice we might just about have enough to get the nether tunnel to the badlands done i think we'll definitely have enough if we just want to do the guardian farm tunnel for now but that's not a very long tunnel so i think packed ice will probably do for that one I think we'll have nearly four stacks of blue ice when we come out with all of this packed ice converted. Well, more like three stacks and change, I guess. We've got three stacks of 64 there and one of 22 at the end, which isn't going to completely cover the nether tunnel out to the badlands, but it's going to be a very good start. And we can always run out to the icebergs, get a little bit more packed ice to convert and use the rest of that. But that is going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you've enjoyed this little look at ice farming and you'll be happily farming ice in your own survival world world as well. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I will see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.